The funny thing about fishing around a bunch of boats, when you catch one, everybody knows and they all come creeping in and closing the circle around you. It almost becomes like this competitive kind of back and forth thing. You catch one, you see somebody catch one, then you catch a five pounder. It's, I like fishing in close quarters. It's kind of a fun, I don't know, just kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of basketball style kind of fishing. Everybody knows you can catch fish on a fluke, but what they don't know is you can catch big fish on a big fluke. Go big or don't go at all, right? So in this video, I got something cool for you. You guys really enjoyed the fluke video we did. I think it was back in fall. You know, fish focusing on bait, little shad. You use that fluke to sort of trick some of those schooling fish. It's a great tool for schooling fish, but it's also a great tool when fish get in this pre-spawn mode and get up on these, these giant flats, whether they have grass like this one. Can you see all that grass underwater? Or whether they have stumps, which actually this has as well. But it's a great tool for fish that really won't eat off the bottom them, but they're kind of looking up a little bit, looking to chase either those predators that are in their kind of beds or in their nests, or they're just looking to feed up so they can move up to go ahead and spawn. So I'm going to show you how to rig this thing up, how I fish it. It's a little bit different than what you would do with a normal fluke, but everybody knows a fluke catches them. It's kind of a headache bait to throw. It's a little bit bland, a little bit slow, but at the same time, it catches bigs and it catches numbers, even a bait this big, I promise you. Yeah, I think we've tried a few presentations today. That's a big one. I'm at force. It is an absolute parking lot out here. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's probably 30 some boats out here, but it don't matter because there's big swimming around it. When it gets crazy like this in Florida, the bigs go nuts. Let's get this thing released. Look at that thing. Dude, it's such a beautiful fish. All right, let's go, let you go. See you later. Go do your thing, homie. We're done here. Just sitting there, wants to hang out. It didn't come off, that was a big one. That's a good one. Stay out of all that garbage. How about them apples, boys? How about them apples? I think I actually had this fish on and it come off and never got the hook and then it came back and got it. That's kind of, it's a game we like to play. Let me show you guys how to rig this thing up. It is probably one of the simplest rigs. We did a video about fluke fishing like a while back. Fluke fishing, the beauty of it is it's so simple to rig and it's so simple to fish. There's literally nothing that you can do wrong. But when you're doing a little more magnum fluke style fishing like this, you do need to change it up a little bit. I use a five aught or a six aught owner wide gap plus hook. Um, the only the only reason I go to the bigger hook is basically to put a little more weight on that fluke. I, I don't think that you need gigantic hooks for gigantic baits. If that fish eats it, it's going to eat it. And if it doesn't eat it, you ain't going to catch it no matter how big of a hook that you put on it. Plus, I think sometimes when you overhook things, uh, they tend to spit it out a lot quicker. I'm running this on 15 pound fluorocarbon, so I'm going to just tie a little Palomar knot real quick right here. And you're probably going to say to yourself, man, that's a big, a bigger hook and that's a bigger bait and you're running 15 pound fluorocarbon. Yes. And, and there's a couple reasons. Let me lick this knot real quick. So number one, if I'm fishing a fluke like this, especially if it isn't around heavy emergent cover, like super thick wood and things along those lines. 
I'm probably fishing pretty clear water because this bait really doesn't displace that much water and it's a very visual bait. So I want to make really long casts. The situation we're in today, we're actually out here on Stick Marsh and the water's semi-clear, but the trick is there's probably 30 some boats out here. There's people everywhere. These fish have been beat up. So I need to make a super long cast to get it away from my trolling motor, away from my electronics and just into whatever open water section I can find. So I want that long cast. Um, the other reason I run the 15 is I don't think me personally you get as much action and as much dance out of the bait when you run like 20 pound it makes you feel a lot more comfortable when you're throwing it around wood and things along those lines but the the line you know how like when your 20 pound line it's sort of like curls and twirls in that and it has that sort of kink to it well in my opinion that that kink and that stiffness to the line doesn't allow kind of like free motion and this bait 100% is about free motion it, it's basically a walk the dog or a jerk bait style kind of dancing back and forth style bait so the more limpness your line has the better action you're gonna get out of it so what you do is you take this thing I think it's seven inches long um, Pick a color that, that matches some of the forage that you have. You know, we're down here in Florida, so shiners are a big thing. This Houdini shad is a big, big, big deal. Copperfield, you know, those kinds of colors. It looks just like those shiners, but if you have a lot of brim, you know, go a little bit darker. If you have a lot of shad, go a little bit lighter. I wouldn't recommend running like straight white, at least in this situation. It's just a little bit too loud because we're doing this in pretty shallow water. Um, for schoolies, you know, you know, albino shad and things along those lines but all you're gonna do is you're gonna just Texas rig it so you pop the the hook into the nose and then make sure since you're using a bigger hook you're gonna go down about a quarter of an inch and basically you're trying to cover up that shank right there and then you're gonna bring it through just like you would with the Texas rig and then bury the hook and I know what you guys are gonna say right off the bat you'd be like why didn't you bring the hook through well th there's another good reason for that in some situations I will bring the hook through um, just like this so basically you you, you pop the hook through and then you just kind of embed it in the bait and you have that same look or that same presentation. In this situation, I'm fishing around a hell of a ton of eelgrass. It, there's a ton of it and it's thick and I really don't want this bait to get fouled all the time because I'm in probably two and a half, three foot of water and the eelgrass comes up six to eight inches. So if I have that hook out, it's going to get snagged. A lot of times too, we're dealing with some bigger fish down here. I'm going to know when they got it. When they grab this thing and hold on to it, that's the fish that you want. So that moves on to the rod then. I'm running and honestly, you can do this with any like seven foot kind of medium heavy this is a Halo Ti. Um, I got a Daiwa. I think this is the Elite. This is actually an 821 reel. It's a pretty fast reel. You're not really reeling this bait. You're, you're picking up slack after you jerk it back and forth, walk the dog with it. So I like a fast reel. The other thing that you'll find will happen, and whether you're fishing like a Magnum fluke like this or your standard smaller fluke, these fish will snatch that thing up and they will swim 20 foot before you even know that they're on there. They kind of dart in and grab it. So you need to be able to pick up a lot of line. You'll also notice I'm running straight fluorocarbon. On spinning rods, I'll throw a fluke like this on braid, but since this is such a big a big bait I got to throw it on a bait caster I like running that straight fluorocarbon um, one of the main reasons is I know down here in Florida that a lot of people will throw braid and these fish you will definitely get more bites out of them if you're using fluorocarbon 15 is really all I need um, but definitely on spinning tackle when I'm using smaller flukes I do run that, that that straight braid but a seven foot medium heavy it allows me to point the rod down at the water and twitch it without hitting the water or hitting the boat all the time but it's enough rod so that I can set the hook on this and that's the other thing setting the hook this is worse than a worm bite there's no tick all it is is weight and oftentimes like I said these fish will be swimming with it so when you're kind of popping it walking it back and forth what will happen is your rod will just you'll go to pop it and your rod will bounce back like it's stuck on something what you need to do is kind of reel down and feel if that fish is there are you stuck on the bottom or are you stuck on some grass if it moves or if it feels kind of weird, that's a fish. You keep reeling down, get it taut and set the hook. It's a lot like weightless senko fishing or, or stick bait fishing where you, you really got to feel for them. You got to be careful because you don't want to gut hook the fish. That I'm, That's something I absolutely hate. With this, it's a little bit better because you're not, I don't know, you're not fishing as slow 
but you really need to reel down and feel them, especially with a seven foot rod. You know, you don't have that extra two, three inches to kind of pick up on the slack if you didn't reel down enough. But that's kind of my setup and that's how you rig it up. Fish it around shallow cover, shallow flats where you know fish are staging and spawning kind of during the pre-spawn and spring. And it's awesome. It's super slow and super annoying to fish, but it catches bigs and it catches numbers, which is super cool. It's a great way to kind of get some bites and get a feel for where the fish are at. That's a big one. I think that fish might have been on the bed. Oh dear. She ate it, boy. And that right there, gentlemen, is why you throw the old fluke dangler. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I don't like throwing a fluke, but sometimes when you're surrounded by boats, there's a bunch of clear water and you got fish on beds cruising around. It can be an absolute stud of a tool. Let's get this big girl released. She freaking smoked it. I actually thought she was bigger than that. Nice five pounder. How about them apples, boys? That's what we're looking for. There you go. Go back down. Dabs. So the way I fish this big old donkey of a thing is I'll make as long of a cast as I can, just like that. You're gonna be fishing this around cover, uh, maybe over cover, around cover, like it, it all depends on kind of how things are set up, but it's definitely a cover thing. We're not talking about fishing for schoolies right here. And what I'm gonna do is once I get it out there, I'll let it sink for a second, but you're really kind of walking it like a dog, maybe walking it like the dog a little faster maybe, but basically you snap your rod tip just like that, and then you give slack back into the line. And what that causes the bait to do is dart back and forth and kind of do all this erratic sort of hunting action. And the bite, well, I just got hung on this little stump, but when they bite it, your rod will just load up when you're doing this twitching and your line will go tight. You're like, huh, I'm either hung or that's a big old bass on the end. The other thing that you can do, and this is sort of the sneaky one, is that right there. You see me do it with a chatterbait a lot. But basically like super see how it like skates and runs usually with the bigger the bigger fluke like this it stays underwater a lot better but it'll kind of like run straight for a second and then dart to the right dart to the left the whole deal with this is just imagine kind of like there's forage down there swimming around there's fish kind of up shallow you know spawning or staging and all you're doing is trying to make that bait look like one of those bluegill one of those shiners that's swimming around and then every once in a while just make it go kind of crazy like oh my god there's a bass it's gonna eat me and that's kind of the trigger that's why it's such a classic kind of bait and why it catches so many fish because it has such a natural darting sort of erratic action to it that it really draws at least visual fish in it's not really great in dirty water but visually when you have fairly clear water it's absolutely deadly oh my That, sir, was very interesting. We just saw a bass, I reeled it in really fast, and a bass came up and actually ate. It like nipped at the bait, but didn't eat it. And that tells me I might be able to reel this thing instead of just like walking it and jerking it. Oh. He committed too. That's a big one. Ate it right at the bottom. Dude. <laughs> Dude, that thing, that is like a four and a half pounder. And that joker ate it right at the boat. Like, I mean right at the boat, dude. Wow, that was freaking awesome. I hope that gives you some insights into how to fish this guy right here, a mag fluke. It's a fun way to fish and it gets bites on these flats when you, your traditional presentations aren't working. You know, your spinner bait, your chatter bait, the things that you normally and usually wanna throw, you know, as you're moving into that pre-spawn kind of spring sort of period, but maybe your water's a little clear. Maybe they've seen a lot of baits. Maybe you just had a cold front go through. You'll get a lot of fish to follow this bait as well. So it gives you a lot of information about what 
what's going on in the water. One more thing I want to note to you before we wrap this thing up. As you can see, I rigged this thing Texas rig. We're fishing over a big flat of eelgrass as well as stumps. A lot of things to like snag your lure and get your lure clung up on. And the trick is I wanted to work my lure through those. So I wanted the bait to be pretty snagless, pretty weedless. However, if you're fishing a flat like this that doesn't have much cover, maybe it's a sand flat with a, maybe a stick here or there, you definitely can take basically a little bit of spinnerbait uh, trailer hook tubing and you can put it right on there with a treble hook and you will miss a lot less fish because what happens with this guy especially if you have fish on beds the fish will swipe at it they'll kind of try to kill it they'll try to run into it and that or they'll just get curious and get close to it but not actually eat it because it is a chunky hunk of plastic but it makes it cast really well it's a fun way to fish though try it out mag fluking on your lake pre-spawn spring spawn hit that like and subscribe button i'll get bogga pat for you tight lines we'll see you back out on the water